All right, earlier today, former Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan told us the U.S. economy would, doing, would be doing a lot better were it not for the debt crisis over in Europe. Joining me uh, now with his take on Europe and the U.S. and President Obama's job plan last night is Peter Orzak. He's the former budget director for President Obama. He's now uh, vice chairman of global banking at Citigroup, and we are happy to have him also as a Bloomberg View columnist. Peter, thanks so much for joining us. Let me get first Great to off. Be here. Let me get first off your take because aside from one uh, viewer email, I haven't heard anybody uh, say he thought the president's speech last night was what we needed at this juncture. Now, I should also say that I've only mostly asked traders and people down here on Wall Street. Well, look, I think uh, the proposals that would put were put forward would be helpful. They would uh, uh, help to reduce the unemployment rate a bit. But one of the key problems that we face is. Uh, I think we are in for a long, hard slog of the kind of fo fi following financial slump, Reinhardt Rogoff type scenario. And in that kind of scenario, you need to tackle housing head on. We didn't hear very much about housing. So, look, it would be helpful to enact the proposals that were put forward, but uh, it's sort of B plus kind of range. All right, so B plus. But let me go back to what Matt, you know, mentioned about Alan Greenspan saying that the U.S. would be doing reasonably well if you back out Europe. Uh, hard to imagine backing it out uh, at this point. But do you agree, Peter, that if we didn't have to deal with Europe at this point, we'd be doing okay in the U.S. or not so because of housing, uh, because of the labor market? I, I think it is, if you look across the historical experience of countries that lived through what we lived through, where we had a collapse in, financial, in private sector borrowing, pretty much every experience suggests sluggish growth for an extended period of time, a matter of years following that. Mm -hmm. So Europe, Europe's situation doesn't help, and in fact, it's being driven by many of the same dynamics. But I think we would be in for a hard slog uh, regardless. And indeed, I think we—I think it's a problem if we keep thinking that these we have these Charlie Brown moments, thinking that these uh, temporary shocks are what what's causing sluggish growth. I think there's a deeper problem, and we need to address it, which is uh, we need to throw the ball longer on housing. Peter, one thing I want to ask you, though, is, you know, as we watch uh, Greece unfold and all the situation in Europe, uh, I think everybody's wondering, you know, how far removed is the United States from kind of following in, in the same predicament? I mean, do you think we're close on the heels of following uh, in terms of what's happening in Europe? And what would you be advising the president at this point as we watch Greece uh, and Europe unfold, continue to unfold at this moment? So kind of two questions there. Sure. Well, with regard to our own situation, uh, if you look at bond yields, clearly uh, we remain the safe haven. We seem to have a bit of breathing room. But what we should be doing now is not only providing more support to the economy in the short run to try to boost that very sluggish growth rate, but enacting a lot more deficit reduction now to take mm -hmm. effect in the future. There's no reason not to do that. And that duality of doing more of both is exactly what's necessary in order to avoid becoming uh, like other countries that have that have faced more immediate fiscal problems. Peter, Peter one, of, one of the things, uh, one of the more interesting columns I thought, they're all interesting, obviously, that you've written for us lately, is this, uh, the problem that we have, the partisan issue that Americans face, I think in a much stronger way than other countries. Do you think the president spoke to that yesterday? Was he bipartisan enough or was it kind of not what it needed to be? Well, look, I think he tried to put together proposals that would uh, attract some bipartisan support, and certainly uh, we're seeing uh, some bipartisan support for an extension or perhaps expansion of the payroll tax holiday in particular. Uh, but that's kind of just on the surface. We do have a much deeper problem in that the country has become hyperpolarized. We keep hoping that that will just go away, but I think it's a structural issue, and we need to start figuring out how to function with hyperpolarization rather than just kind of hoping it will disappear overnight, which it won't. Yeah, it certainly doesn't feel that way. Um, with that polarization then, Peter, how much of this program do you think Congress will ultimately pass? Uh, I would imagine that it's likely we'll wind up with something in the two to three hundred billion dollar range so that we will avoid, uh, you know, not all of the proposal, but we will avoid uh, having a significant fiscal contraction at the beginning of next year. All right. I think we have to run. But, Peter, listen, thank you so much, and we appreciate you uh, weighing in on what the uh, president had to say and also talking about what's going on in Europe. We, we always appreciate it. Peter Orzag. My, my pleasure. Good All to right. be with you. Take care. Have a good weekend.